Hey guys, this is Don and I am back with another tutorial for Video Fort. Today we are going to be in Cinema 4D and uh, we are going to be building a pretty advanced uh, scene, but uh, we'll be going through everything step by step. Uh, so don't worry, it will be very easy to follow. So let's just uh, jump in and uh, see how we can uh, do this. Okay, so today I might be going at a slightly faster pace just because of uh, how long this tutorial could end up being. But um, you will need these two models here uh, as a starting point. That's if you want to create the same thing I am doing. So I will provide these for you. Uh, what you will also need is the visualize content library in Cinema 4D. So if you have the, at the very least, the visualized version of Cinema 4D or the studio version, which contains, you know, all the versions, it's like the, the big version, which has everything, then you will also have this section. This is the content libraries that you would install after installing the main program. If you don't know how to do that, it will be under your update menu and uh, just look for content libraries, install those, and you will be able to get these um, plant models. So this is in the visualize section under 3D objects and plants. We want to start with the European trees mature section. And here I'm just going to get a random selection. I say random, but uh, I actually know which ones I want because I have done this before. So I think I had about uh, six or seven of these. And once they are in the scene, they need to be in a cloner. So if we take this, put in a cloner, and we'll clone them onto a big plane. So if I get a plane, set the size to 10,000 by 10,000. We don't need any more width and height segments than just one by one. But uh, in the cloner, let's uh, change this mode to object and drag our plane onto this. By default, they snap to the corners, which is the vertex here. So let's change that uh, distribution from vertex to surface and also untick align clone so the face up and let's change the number from 20 to 150. now before we do this we should click render instances so that the scene remains responsive you can read up about how this works uh, by right clicking in show help but um, to keep it short it's faster and you definitely want to do this okay so now I can set this to 150 trees and look, the scene is still quite responsive. Let's go to our render settings quickly. And I'm going to use a film aspect of 0.8, which is what I was using in the original example. And uh, this is just the portrait uh, aspect for Instagram. And the preview was posted to my Instagram. So... Um, I just ended up with uh, this frame size. Let's get a camera. I am kind of uh, lost here. I don't know where the center of the scene is, but uh, okay, here we go. And I will set the um, focal length of this to be quite high. I'm gonna go for 100 millimeters. So almost a telescopic. Uh, focal length and then I can now try and set my camera position this could be quite tricky with all of these trees in the way so you will have to play about with the cloners random uh, distribution settings so in the seed here you want to just uh, change this around and see if you can come up with a good frame now in this example, I was, you know, I just, I was lucky to get this frame here, which looked pretty good. You know, you've got this nice foreground uh, detail, these leaves, and then you've got the two trees sort of uh, framing my character. So if you wanted to do that kind of thing and uh, you couldn't just get it uh, randomly, then 
you could uh, also, for example, fetch the trees out of the cloner. So let's say I want uh, this tree type, whatever this is over here. Let me see if I can quickly find out by turning these on and off. And it looks like it's the Italian maple tree. So I will get a copy of this out of the cloner, drag it outside by holding control. And now I can position this anywhere I want. So if I do want that um, kind of uh, framing by the trees, this would be my tree on the left side. And then uh, for the other side, and it looks like in my original example, I did have the same uh, type of tree. Now you could mix it up, do something different, but uh, let's keep it simple here and um, keep moving as fast as possible and just do two Italian maple trees like this. Now this is a pretty, uh, you know, quick setup. If you were doing this properly, you would uh, take more care and uh, see if you can, you know, line up something better. I can't really see the edges of my frame here, so I'm going to press Shift V to bring up the project uh, viewport attributes. And in the view tab, I will go to the tinted border opacity and let's set this to 100%. And uh, now I can just see a bit uh, clearer. All right, still trying to line up my camera position to be as good as possible. And I think this right here will work quite well and uh, we should save this somewhere. Uh, let's see, just call it one. The next thing is uh, my floor here is uh, too flat. So let's uh, fix that, make it look more natural. I will take a landscape object from the primitives menu. And let's give it the following dimensions. Let's go for 4,000 for the width and 4,000 for the depth and just 200 for the height. And uh, the way the landscape object works, its anchor point is in the center of its um, you know, size or shape. So it's never going to be sitting on top of the X, Z plane. So what we have to do is go to the coordinates here and set the Y position to be one half of whatever the Y size is. And in this case, it's just going to be 100. And now this is sitting on top of the floor plane in our scene. Let's put this into a null so we can control it uh, from here like this. And in the landscape settings, I will change the sea level to about 75%, which is going to flatten the landscape effect like this here. All right, it could be a bit challenging to see what's going on in the scene. So you might want to play around with the type of display that you are using. So constant shading lines is this uh, flat uh, 2D shading, which works quite well to see what's going on. So I might uh, use that for now. So let's uh, bring back our sea level to 75. And I am going to just rotate this around until, um, you know, there's nothing blocking my uh, character from my camera. I want mostly flat ground in front of my camera and then, you know, there's bumps back here. So something like this, I think, will work quite well. Let's uh, create the outer landscape. So this is the inner landscape. Let's label it as such. And for the outer, let's call that outer L. The outer landscape, you want to use the following dimensions. So I'm just doing this from memory. 60,000 for the width and 60,000 for the depth. And the height is going to be 2,000, which means the Y position needs to be 1,000 like this. And uh, now if I rotate this around, you can just see it in the distance. It's intersecting with our floor here, so I need um, to just move this whole thing down in the whole scene. So minus one in the Y position, and that problem is fixed straight away. And uh, let me just make sure my uh, dimensions are correct. 
60 by 60 by 2 okay and you can just sort of see this in the distance i mean you know there's so many trees there and by the time we are done with you know everything else and the fog and so on it might not be too visible but uh, we definitely don't want the background to be completely flat either okay, the next thing is going to be these uh, big daisies uh, that you see floating around in the scene so for these i am going to take that same cloner and let's call this one cloner daisies just a cloner d i know what it means so that's fine and in our content browser i will fetch the daisy plant so in the garden and exotic section this is where the daisies uh, come from all right and i will just uh, drop that into the cloner which means removing these trees here now something which i did by accident before which caused my uh, scene to crash completely and uh, i just had to sit here and wait for cinema 4d to kind of uncrash and fix itself was um i tried to set up the cloner for these daisies using uh, you know sort of starting from scratch by going to more graph cloner uh, you know change this to uh, object and uh, the object was the landscape uh here and the problem is by default the cloner will go to the vertex and the landscape here has many uh vertex points you know this um where the lines cross each other so it's like trying to create uh you know potentially hundreds of thousands of clones at the same time and it just caused my computer to crash so what you would do is uh, just copy the previous setup which we have already enabled render instances and um, only dealing with you know a surface distribution with uh, a fairly fairly low number of clones and then you won't experience that uh, crash or do your setup this way change it to surface first and then uh, drag your um, landscape here anyway you might not have even come across that issue but i did and uh, just for the benefit of anyone else who might now you won't have to okay so with the daisies the object i am using is the landscape as i have said uh, before instead of the original plane which means it's going to be a bit more localized in the general area where our camera is and uh, that's perfect that's what we want in the transform tab i will set the sizes to six so we have these, um, you know, unrealistically large daisies, you know, as large as tree trunks. But uh, that's the style of the scene. I just wanted to create something surreal. All right. And uh, here I will use a random effector. And uh, it's starting to look a bit messy here. So maybe I will switch back to grow shading, just uh, the regular uh, shading, basically. And i don't want to change anything except for scale and it's going to be uniform scale and i'm just going to type out one to give me this random size for my daisies now they are just uh, blocking my camera view here so what i can do is um go to the cloner itself and let's change the seed until maybe we have a bit more of a clearing in front of the camera so something like this here could work um let's see i think i would still want to get rid of uh, this this one right here right next to the character and then this other one uh in the foreground but uh, let's see if we can find a random position that will work then that could save us uh, some time but um if uh, that's not working you can still have some uh, degree of control for example you can take the cloner and get a plane effector i'll just call this uh, plane scale minus one because i want to use this to delete these uh, daisies in the center of the scene so let's disable position scale though will be set to minus one 
and let's uh, put a fall off on this to localize the effect so sphere and it's gonna be maybe 500 percent and now depending on where I move this uh, on where I move this rather now you can see it's making the daisies disappear so I just want to clean up the area around the character there so if I jump out of the camera so I can see a bit clearer what's going on we can make this larger perhaps let's go for 600 and lower the fall off so the effect is more dramatic and uh, more total in its effect so the immediate area around the character is now fixed however we have this uh, other daisy in front of the camera and i don't want to make the effect too large because i do want to keep some of these around the edges so what i would do in this case and uh, this is something which um, uh, some users might not be aware of but you can actually affect individual clones in cinema 4d using MoGraph selection so if i uh, go to MoGraph and MoGraph selection these uh, dots will appear over each clone and uh, it might be hard to see right now but uh, over the black here you can certainly see and uh, each of these dots is uh, one of the daisy clones in the scene and we want to take this one here so if i select that it will turn yellow and i can add to the selection by holding shift to you know perhaps add more than just this single clone but in this case this is a uh, i think this should be fine or maybe let's take these two small daisies here they're so small anyway we might as well get rid of them so there's three clones selected there again it might be too hard to see on uh, the, the youtube quality but uh, hopefully you know what's going on here all right and uh, this will create a MoGraph selection tag next to my cloner and now what i can do is uh, with the cloner and tag selected i can go to MoGraph effector and another plane effector and it's only going to affect what was in the selection and this could be one could be two could be any number of clones you want to select all right um for this let's uh you know untick position and go to scale instead and set this to minus one and uh, that should uh, be deleting okay i disabled it up here by accident all right so now it's just uh, removing that uh, group of uh, daisies all right and i accidentally knocked my camera here so i'm gonna press shift Control and z to only undo the camera movement so that's another tip there if you didn't know that okay the next thing is going to be the roses around the the scene if we go back to our example and i keep closing this for some reason you can see that uh, we have these roses just you know uh scattered across the scene and again reusing our cloner we will call this one cloner roses and remove the selection tag because we don't need it this time and then in content browser i will get uh, the roses from the exotic section here so we want to get uh, orange uh, pink and yellow those are the three different color color variations all right so one of them didn't come in there which one was that it looks like uh, yellow okay i didn't uh, select it properly okay and i will just uh, drag these into the cloner r let's remove the daisies put that uh, in here and uh, they're going to be huge because of uh, the transform we put on the previous cloner so let's normalize this back down to one and uh, i am also going to remove the random effect and uh, let's see we can leave the plane effector removing them around the center of the scene there so this is working on more than one uh, cloner but uh, anything else we can remove so the random effector we should remove that maybe um go for a two scale though just to make these uh, a bit bigger now 
I want to play with the seed, but let's maybe have less of these, just 100 this time. And the idea here would be we want to have some in the foreground where, uh, and again, I've closed this. I keep uh, doing this for some reason. Uh, you know what? Let me put this in the picture viewer. So now even if I close it, it will be here. Okay. Why didn't I do this from the beginning? Okay, but uh, you can see that, uh, you know, we have these uh, roses in the foreground and they're illuminating the tree. So we want to do the same kind of uh, setup here. And we could um, just arrive there by luck and chance again. You can kind of see it's uh, happening here, at least on the right side, but uh, not quite. Although I think this here could uh, work. But let me just finesse this with uh, more graph selection. And uh, this is really hard to uh, pinpoint where that uh, tag is. So I could just make my brush larger by uh, using the open bracket, square bracket key. And uh, there we go. That is now selected. And I can go to more graph, get the plane effector. This is going to get a lot of mileage today. It's very useful though, so it's kind of kind of hard to avoid using. But uh, I'm gonna position this next to the tree on the left side over there. Let me just make sure that is indeed what's going on. So right next to that tree, which is uh, by the way just this block shape. So we need to put more segments on this. We'll deal with that uh, later. And uh, we could even rotate this as well, so make it fit a bit better. Okay, that's the left side. Let's uh, do the same for the other side, and we will need to use a different um, selection tag for this. So I'll click away from the first one to create a new selection. And there we go, that little yellow circle right there would work. All right, now I can go to Effector and plane again and let's just move this around until it's on the other side of the tree okay so you know just showing you how uh, useful more graph selection can be uh, you could argue perhaps that uh, this is doing things the hard way I could have just positioned uh, the roses you know individually like I did with the trees that would also work but um, I just wanted to use the opportunity to show you guys uh, some uh, tricks you can use whilst you are in Cinema 4D. Um, the next thing is going to be the smaller plants that you see around the scene. There's just uh, two types. One of them is not that visible even. It's the spicata uh, plant, which is this purple uh well it's a green stalk with a purple flower at the top and then there's also this palm leaves plants so for these again i was just using the same uh cloner setup let's call this one uh palm so cloner p we can take out the roses uh, out of that go to the content browser and let's get the palm leaves so this will be right here let's drop that right in there again we can get rid of uh, some old stuff and uh, also let's bring the scale down I think even lower than this let's go for 0.4 I don't want these to be too large but uh, this is where you would use your own you know uh, ideas and uh, really it can be laid out however you you wish maybe i will have less and i'm just trying to find a good uh, layout okay and i'm gonna go with this here um but uh, maybe make them smaller so let's go for point three instead this is just uh, some extra details to just uh, fill up the scene a bit and uh, we want the other plant, so the spicata. I said that like I knew what it was from the beginning, but uh, that's because I had to check many times as I was uh, testing this idea. 
just change the seed. That's a much smaller plant, so we don't need to size it uh, down. And maybe have more of these. So let's go back up to 100. And there will just be a few scattered across the scene, and uh, you might spot uh, some of them. Okay, and uh, maybe drop a random effect onto those to play with the rotation slightly. So I will just type in maybe 11, 11, and 11 just to change the way they are pointing. They're very hard to see actually, but uh, they are there. The next thing here is going to be the grass, and uh, I closed my uh, Windows preview, so let's open the picture viewer. This uh, grass that you see here, maybe it's not uh, too visible in the foreground, but certainly you can see it in the distance there. Okay, so this is actually very easy. If I take the landscape, go to the floor icon and I want to add the grow grass effect. Now this is only available in uh, later versions of Cinema 4D. I think 14 and onwards this is when this came in or could be 15. I'm not sure. Hopefully you guys are using the, the, the newer versions of Cinema if you want to be able to access this. If not, then uh, you can replace the grass with a dirt texture instead. And uh, we'll come to that in a second. But uh, just by default, you know, do a render region to see what the grass is going to look like. And uh, this is it. You know, it's got this total coverage. Uh, it might be too tall, actually, because I can't see some of my roses here. So let's uh, change a few things. I'm going to go to the material. And the blade length is going to be just 10. And uh, the blade width, for when we do the final render, we would want to drop this down to, say, 1. And the density we would bring up to much higher than 15%. But for the preview, let's keep the blade width large and uh, the density quite low. So we still get coverage, but uh, just less uh, detail. Okay, and then in the density texture, we want to load up a noise map. And you can kind of see a preview of what's going on here, although it's not uh, the best preview that I have seen. So I don't think this is that useful, really. But um, we can open this uh, noise map, and we want to go to the contrast. Let's put this all the way up to 100%. And the noise uh, space uh, type here, we'll change this from texture to UV 2D. And as I do that, you can see that um, you know this will now correspond to the white areas will be where there is grass, and the black areas there won't be. And that's how we get the separation between the grass part of the floor and uh, the water. I'm just going to make one more change in here, which is the global scale. I will drop this down to 50%. And again, I just know these numbers from when I was doing the practice runs for the tutorial. I won't uh, do a render just yet. I know it's going to work, so I don't need to preview it again. But uh, let's create our water material. This is going to be a black texture. We want to remove the standard specular and just add a reflection. Let's remove the specular strength all the way down to zero on this because we only want reflection. And this will be set to 50%. The attenuation will be set to additive. And in the bump channel, we will put a noise map and let's set the global scale to 50% as well. And uh, I think that's it. We don't change anything else here. But um, at this level, I will set the strength to 1%. And that will actually be enough to give us the wavy water effect. So for the water to work, it needs to be slightly higher than the ground. So I will get another plane. Make this one 4,000 by 4,000 also. That's the same as our landscape for the width and height. But uh, its coordinates I will set to 1 centimeter on Y. So it's just above the original landscape. And I can now apply the water onto this. And uh, now we have our water layer. So if I now do a another preview just of this region here, we don't need to do the whole frame. We should see our water and the grass growing around it. 
And uh, there we go. As you can see, it works perfectly. So this is, you know, just all about uh, adding extra elements and things to try and make it uh, more interesting. In my original scene, I did not have the water and it was just a normal dirt texture. Um, and uh, I mean, it looked okay, but with the reflections, you know, especially by the time we do the lighting and so on, uh, the whole thing would just uh, be more better looking, basically. Okay, so as far as uh, creating the actual scene uh, stuff and geometry and all that, that's it. We now want to move on to do the lighting and developing the style and look um, similar to what we have here. And let's try and replicate this as close as uh, possible. I'm going to tell you up front that there's going to be one trade-off for this if you want to achieve this exact look here, and it's going to be rendering speed because um, I was using global illumination to get these lights to uh, bounce onto the trees. And uh, whenever you calculate global illumination uh, in a scene, that uh, automatically means a, ro a longer render time. And uh, it's even worse when you're dealing with uh, transparent objects. But uh, if this is just for a single frame, then uh, I think it's worth it, you know, because you only have to render it once. Okay, so let's uh, start setting up the lighting. I will start with a physical sky. And in the time and location, let's set this to midnight. So just type in 24 and it will reset to 000. In the details tab, I want to go to the show stars and let's set the magnitude all the way up to 10.5, which is the maximum. That just means the number of stars in the scene basically and uh, we want to maybe put the radius up to one and it kind of looks very blobby and splotchy you know we want to see a bit more detail back there so let's change this uh, texture preview size from default to 2k for example and uh, we might not see much still through the trees um, and all that stuff but weirdly I think that's the stars being reflected on the floor there. So the preview works, but uh, it's not the most useful thing. But, you know, it will be there when you render. So just uh, use these settings and uh, maybe play around and see what you can come up with. In the sun tab, we don't need any shadows. So let's uh, cancel that, set that to none. And actually, I'm going to turn off the sun totally because we're not using it for any illumination in this uh, scene. Okay, but I do want some fog, so let's enable that. Go to the fog uh, tab, and I am going to set the color to blue. So 200 for the hue, and then just 100% saturation. And uh, the density will be set to 10. And uh, the start height, minus 1365. Oops. 1365 and 1365. And... Um, Again, these numbers are not just being pulled out of nowhere. This is some uh, testing I did before. Anyway, this means my fog will start somewhere below my floor plane and then um, by the same distance finish somewhere up here. So um, let's do a render and see what this looks like. And then we can uh, do the other effects. This is just to see where we are at the beginning now. I don't need this to be rendered so it's such a high resolution. So let's drop this to about uh, say 640 by 800. And uh, that should be enough just for preview purposes. Okay, and uh, here we are. So this in itself could be an interesting look. You might want to experiment with but uh, of course you know we want to create something like uh, like this here this was a much higher resolution render as you can see but uh, this is our starting point you can see the fog is working pretty well okay so let's get some of those other lights into the scene including uh, some illuminated plants so let's start with the main light this was just a standard light and i put this uh, you know kind of in the center of the crystal somewhere like here just try and position this as uh, best as you can 
and set the color to whatever color you have been using up to this point. I have been using blue, so we'll continue with blue. And in the details section, I will change the fall off to inverse square physically accurate, which means we have uh, this uh, type of fall off where it's really strong next to the light source and then fades uh, exponentially, I think, uh, inversely as it um, as the as the distance from the light increases. And uh, this is where you might want to go back to, you know, changing the preview, uh, the display mode, uh, rather because uh, right now everything is kind of dark, but uh, this is useful for previewing what our lighting is going to look like. So I'm gonna stick to the grow shading and I'm used to it, so it's, uh, it's fine for me. But um, we need a material for the crystals. So let's uh, create a new material, make this uh, black, go to transparency and set the refraction to 1.5. You could uh, maybe go higher and see what that does for the material, but uh, just to stick to what I did before, I will stay with uh, 1.5. And uh, I'm gonna go to the luminance channel and let's load up a Fresnel, which is going to be brighter around the edges um, and we're not seeing its effects here. That's because we need to go to transparency and click additive. And uh, now we can see the luminance, okay. And again, we can use blue here too, something like this, and maybe just bring it in slightly. And uh, in the reflectance channel, we will change this uh, default specular to be CGX, and I will set the roughness to 40% and the strength to 4% to create this uh, kind of dull uh, spread out highlight. And then I'll make a copy and just reverse these two numbers. So this time the roughness will be just four and the strength will be 40. So kind of the opposite of what we did before. This is now a much brighter, smaller highlight. And uh, we're adding these together to create the final uh, look there. Uh, and I think for the material, that's it actually. We just apply this to the crystals because uh, a, a huge part of uh, that look was just the geometry itself uh, of these uh, crystals. I didn't generate these, uh, these are a free model that uh, of course you will be able to download to follow along with the tutorial. Uh, I hope I mentioned that at the beginning of the video. Uh, apologies if I didn't, I'll put it in the description. Okay. Um, so that's the material for that. I'm trying to do as many things as I can at this stage before I run another render. Uh, let's see, uh, let's do the um, lit up plants. So any plant which has a flowery part that you wanna light up, you wanna go to the material and go to the color and let's go to luminance and paste that in there too. And uh, that didn't change up too much there. But uh, just repeat this process for all your plants that you want to be uh, lit up in the scene. It's quite a nice effect in, the, in this case. So we have the rose petals, various uh, colors. And uh, as I do this, you can see them uh, starting to light up and uh, this is just going to be more interesting than when they're not lit up. So uh, the last one is the daisy. I will do the same here too, except uh, I think like this, it's too bright. So I will go back to all of these, select all of them and go to the luminance, turn down the regular brightness to zero, and then the mix strength set that to 50 percent so it won't be as bright but uh, still pretty visible okay and uh, i think now i could run another render and let's see what we have okay i would say this is looking great we are on the right track here 
Um, of course, we need to make some adjustments. There is no dirt texture on the normal landscape. It's just this default gray. So we need to close that up. And also the crystals, there are just too many uh, reflections, kind of, you know, self-reflections and bounces going around in there. So we end up with this sort of visual mess. So we want to clean that up. Okay, let's uh, go back and do those two things. The dirt texture, uh, you can just find a dirt texture on Google or in my case, I am going to use one of my uh, one of my uh, own presets. This will be in the ground texture pack. Let me just grab the dirt preset here and I'll include this one for free for this video. So you guys can do the same thing and let's apply this to the landscape. This will be just uh, on the same level as the grass. It doesn't matter. It will still work. And I will copy this over to the outer landscape, which again, we're not really seeing that much, but uh, just in case. And then um, the too many reflections issue, this uh, is easy to fix. Just go to the render settings and in options, we want to drop the ray depth, reflection depth and shadow depth. So by default, that's 15, 5 and 15. It's really this which is going to make the most uh, difference. So I will say two for here. And uh, for the ray depth and shadow depth, let's say six. We don't have any shadows anyway, but uh, in case we did, then I just lower these settings and this will speed up the render too. So let's uh, try again and uh, see where we are. And this is the result. So if we compare the before and after, you can see that uh, this is just a bit um, uh, cleaner looking. And this brings us to the last thing, which is going to be the global illumination and uh, also finalizing some of the render settings. But um, like I said before, the, the way this was achieved here was uh, using global illumination. So the roses are lighting up the trees. So before I uh, do that, let me perhaps show you an alternative method you could uh, try if you don't want to deal with the long render times. And also you could uh, consider this for animated scenes because um, again, if you're using GI really, you don't want to be rendering more than just a few frames. So instead of uh, using, um, you know, the calculations done by GI, you could fake the effect using real light. And uh, let me just quickly try and illustrate this. If I take a light, which will come in at the center of the scene there, I can bring this to the base of the tree that I am trying to affect. And in this case, I only want to affect the trees. So I would go to the project tab and I would uh, only include the object I want to try here. So I believe it's one of these trees. So it looks like the second one. Let's bring that here and change the mode from exclude to include. And now only this tree is being lit up from that uh, light source. Okay, and I would just uh, pick a color from uh, the roses below the tree. So this orange here and go to the details and the fall off I'll set this to inverse square clamped and let's have a radius of just 100 and uh, we now just have this uh, subtle illumination around the tree now I could duplicate the slide move it uh, across to the other side and basically any other location that I want this type of illumination to be taking place this time it's going to be a pink color. And uh, in the project tab, let's load up our other tree and uh, take out the other one. Okay, so two light sources um, simulating global illumination effects. Now, this is not going to look as crisp or as nice as the GI effect, but it will render a lot faster. And um, if you're worried about speed, 
then that's definitely the route you wanna you wanna take and uh, you just have to repeat that process for any parts of your scene you wanna subtly illuminate and uh, simulate global illumination and for this example this is the result so you know 33 seconds to render this uh, 800 by uh, 640 frame uh, keep that in mind and uh, let's see what GI is going to do and how long that would uh, take okay so I'm going to switch off these two lights because we are gonna switch to GI so if I go to effect global illumination and uh, I'm just going to set my settings uh, sort of all at once here. In the primary method, uh, leave it at irradiance cache. Secondary, we're going to use light mapping. The maximum depth can stay the same, but uh, in the samples here, let's lower this to low. And in the irradiance cache tab, I will choose some preview settings. So this will render faster and um, I will lower these even further. Let's go for minus four for the minimum rate and minus two for the max rate. And in light mapping, I will drop the path count to 1000. Now, these are some really low settings, but uh, I think it, sh it should still work. And uh, tick build radio city maps because it will just speed things up. If I were to try and render this now, uh, it would just uh, slow down completely and uh, nothing would happen for a really long time that's because of this uh, transparent material so let's um, see what we can do to try and get around this the first thing is we could just try to make this not seen by gi so untick this and in the material itself we would um, also you know not receive any gi or generate any gi at all and we could extend this, um, you know, fine tuning to other parts of the scene, such as the materials. Um, in this case, we only want the GI to really bounce off onto the trees. So in all of these other materials, I could uh, essentially do the same thing. We don't want these to generate or receive any global illumination, but uh, that would take a while. So. In this uh, example, I'll just leave it as they are, but just be aware that you can do some things to help you out and uh, speed up your scene. Now, what I actually did in my uh, original example, I had uh, two versions of the project. One where I just uh, turned off the crystal completely, so I just shut it off in the scene and in the render. And this version without the crystal was rendered with global illumination turned on. And uh, because uh, Cinema doesn't have to calculate for the crystal, then it will render much faster without it being there. Okay, so that was one scene. You render that out. And then uh, in the other version of the scene, you turn the crystal back on and then render that but without global illumination because that will still be a reasonably fast render um, as you saw before so it would be this kind of thing here and um, also in the version with global illumination you want to make sure you go to your multi-pass options here and enable the GI layer so it will render the GI uh, pass as a separate layer that you can then recombine with um, your standard render scene uh, in After Effects. Now, that might be confusing right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do this and then uh, show you how this works later when we do the compositing. So in this case, let's enable Global Illumination. I will go to my Save Options and I will just output these to um, you know the, a location that I will remember. I am also going to change from the standard render to physical. Uh, I just like the way it cleans up the edges a bit nicer, especially with a transparent material. I will change the sampling quality from low to, let's say, automatic, and the shading error threshold I would uh, drop down to about 12% also get uh, a few object buffers to help me out with the compositing in after effects so 
there is definitely going to be one on my character. So let's um, put a compositing tag and enable object buffer. And then one for the crystal itself. So that would be number two in this case. And I had one on the sky object, which was the physical sky over here. That would be number three. And uh, any other element in the in the scene you want to be able to isolate in After Effects. So you can imagine the tree is also here, actually, need to be uh, usable. So I think that's number four then, which means in the render settings, we would uh, set up the corresponding buffers. So I'll do this four times and change the number to one, two, three, and four. Okay. And finally, we can hit render and then uh, take a look in uh, After Effects. And uh, before I forget, this is the GI version with the crystal turned off. Okay, and uh, this is it. So it looks pretty good. Compare that to the version with the fake, um, you know, GI effect here. This is clearly much better looking. So if you can go this route, then I would, um, I would uh, recommend you do. And in the layer section, if I change this to single pass, you can see this is the global illumination pass by itself. And then the object buffers that we set up. So that's the GI version. And uh, like I said before, I would also render a version without GI, but with the crystal enabled and just make sure that uh, you save to a different location. So let's run this too. On the first render here, I forgot to, you know, increase the settings for the grass. I would have gone for a smaller blade width and uh, maybe a higher density. But uh, this actually doesn't look too bad. Um, but uh, maybe, you know, this is a fairly small frame. So if you were to bump this up, you might uh, perhaps look at that again. But uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, this actually looks good enough anyway. And uh, just for reference, that first frame took five minutes and 26 seconds. This one will be much faster, even with the transparent crystal, because uh, of course we don't have GI on this one. Okay, so I would uh, let that finish. And in After Effects, let me just uh, try and show you the setup here. This was the original example. And there's a whole bunch of layers here, but uh, not really too much going on. If I just try and... Um, turn things on and off. There's a crystal sub layer, which I uh, cut out the crystals using an object uh, buffer. So the buffer for this was actually a bit uh, transparent, as you can see here, but there was just enough gray in the transparent areas that uh, I was able to use a levels adjustment to bring it all to white, you know, so just by sliding to the left side like this. And then using the render itself, I then isolated the crystals using the, the buffer. So what I used this for was um, just a light rays effect using trap code shine. So if we uh, let this load, I am still rendering in cinema, so that's why it's taken a while, but okay, it's finished. But you can see here, this is the render without GI, and uh, I will show you how to combine the two. So back in uh, After Effects, uh, let's turn off the actual layer. Like I said, uh, I used the crystals layer to with trap code shine with the colors set to white, blue, and blue to generate these light rays here. Now, this is all optional, of course, and uh, you might not have um, trap code shine, so you might not be able to do this too. Okay, and then uh, on top of this, uh, I combined the original image, which is just uh, this, with the global illumination multi-pass layer. So 
here is one level of it and then I exaggerated the effect by duplicating the layer and uh, using a mask to sort of isolate it down here. If I solo these, you can see that uh, it is indeed the global illumination pass. You can see you know, the pink and orange coming from the roses in the foreground. And then in the background, you've got the yellow coming from the uh, daisies. And uh, of course, you would just set the blending mode of this to be add or screen. And then, uh, you know, this would be the effect before and uh, after. And uh, I even played with the brightness a bit more just to make it stronger and the saturation to make it more colorful than it originally was. And uh, in here, I was using a 16 bit color space using Adobe RGB and I linearized the workspace and uh, I had to do that in order for my passes to appear correctly. In order for my passes to appear correctly, if I uh, turn it off, you can see it throws off the whole scene and um, creates a much different uh, looking result. And then uh, on top of this, there was just, uh, I think, some glow effects and um, really that was it as far as the compositing most of the look was achieved in um, inside of uh, cinema 4d so uh, that's it that is how you would create a um, an abstract forest uh, surreal scene i hope you learned something new and i hope you enjoyed the tutorial that's it for me and i will see you next time